Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. So in the previous sessions we have covered uh, many concepts in a C language and today we will uh, discuss about one important topic in C language that is dynamic memory allocation. Dynamic memory allocation. That means allocating the memory for the variables at runtime. So here the allocation will be done at runtime. Right. So don't be confused. So I will clarify what is the meant by this runtime. So I will give you an example. So let us take an arrays concept. So if you consider an array concept, so first we, we have to declare the array. So we have to specify the size while the declaration. Right? So we'll declare the array as int some uh, some marks of some 10. So this implies so the marks is an array of integer data type and it can hold the maximum of 10 elements right so this is the maximum size so why i'm saying it says maximum size means so we may use the 10 elements and we may not use the 10 elements right so here there are two cases so case one so if we are using only five elements if we are using only five elements so the remaining five elements size is waste. So we are not using the remaining five elements. We are using only the five elements. So remaining five element size will be wasted. That means, uh, sorry, uh, memory. Memory. The memory allocated for five elements is wasted. Okay. So for example, int occupies some two bytes of memory. If it is a 16 bit compiler, let us consider it as a 16 bit compiler. So it occupies two bytes. So total memory occupied by this marks array is 10 elements into 2. So the 20 bytes of memory will be allocated for this array. And here we are using only 10 bytes of memory. And what about the remaining 10 bytes of memory will be wasted. Right. So this is one case. So we are wasting the memory. So without declaring the size, without giving the size, this array declaration is invalid. So in the declaration part itself, we have to give the maximum size. Right? That's the drawback. So what about the case 2? So 10 elements are there. So using 20 bytes. And if I need to add 3 more elements to be added. 3 more elements to be added. So this cannot be possible, right? So even though the array is having uh, the limitation on boundaries, but so these are the two cases we can face while giving the size at the compile time. So this is called a compile time allocation, allocating the memory in compile time. So for avoiding such type, we can allocate the memory at runtime. So at runtime, so we did not go with the arrays declaration. So we at the runtime, whatever the required memory we need, so that memory can be added, right? Allocated. See. So for this allocation, hope you understood this one, right? So this is called a compile time allocation. So declaration part means compile time allocation. Now, so for this allocating this memory in uh, during the runtime. Right. So, for this allocate uh, dynamic memory allocation, for allocating the memory at runtime, we are we are having a three functions. So that is uh, mlloc function.
C L of function. So uh, mm -hmm. for allocating the memory, we are having two two uh, functions. The third function is for increasing the memory, increasing the memory. Right? So that is realloc, realloc, reallocation, right? And for deallocating, for deallocating the memory, we are having one function called a free function, right? So as we are uh, creating or allocating the uh, memory during the runtime. So the user is responsible to deallocate the memory after its use, right? So unless the user deallocates the memory, the memory will not be erased, right? So if you are allocating the memory using one among these three functions, it is required to free that function. I mean, free that memory. Okay. So whatever the memory we are allocating, that memory should be deallocated with by using this free function. Okay, then we'll see one by one what is the syntax of this malloc, calloc, and realloc. So malloc means it's a memory allocation. It stands stands for memory allocation. Right. So whatever the function we are using for allocating the memory, that will be in a pointer type. Okay. It's a void pointer. It returns a void pointer so that we can type cast to our uh, required uh, data type. Right. So the syntax for this one is pointer is equal to type cast malloc function. size right so this is the syntax for malloc function so if we want to allocate the memory see example i will give you the example so that you will be understood so pointer i want to uh, store the pointer array right so pointer okay. sorry integer array so int star i am typecasting to int star malloc so i need the integer values to be stored into the memory so that's why i am simply giving some n into size of int so we are having one function called size of which gives the size of the data type so this will be allocating see here if n is equal to 5 if n is equal to 5 then size of integer size of integer means if it is a 16 bit compiler it is a 2 bytes of memory so 5 into 2 that means 10 bytes so 10 bytes of memory will be occupied or 10 bytes of memory will be allocated to this pointer and this pointer will be addressing at beginning Hope you understood. So it's a void pointer. Actually, this pointer is a void pointer. So we have to type cast to the required format. So then malloc function and we have to specify the size. So here, you know, uh, in the size, so if we want to store some five variables or uh, six values, so that, that will be mentioned here n into size of int. So if it is a float, we can give a size of float so that 4 bytes of memory will be occupied for each float value in a 16 bit compiler. So 4 into 5 total 20 bytes of memory will be allocated to this point. And see, this will return in such way. So 10 bytes of memory and this pointer will be pointing towards the starting address the beginning address okay so for each and every value we have to increment the pointer so that so it is an integer so two bytes of memory will be occupied for each and every value so this is how we can use this malloc function similarly cloc so see 
the complete 10 bytes of memory will be occupied or allocated to the pointer here. See, C alloc function. C alloc function. C alloc function means contiguous memory allocation. Continuous memory allocation. So here the memory will be allocated in terms of blocks. In terms of blocks. So that means, so see, I will uh, give you the syntax. So same syntax, here also it will return a void pointer so that we have to uh, typecast to the required format. So for that purpose, ptr pointer sum is equal to pointer variable. Pointer variable is equal to some int star, I am giving the integer pointer. So, C alloc. And here, we have to mention the size. Sorry. We are going to mention the two parameters that is a number of blocks and the size. The number of blocks and size. How many number of blocks we need? So, example. So let us take the previous example. We need to store the from five variables, right? So five values. So I am giving ptr is equal to some int star. Sorry, I have to mention the int star. Okay, five cast. So it's a single, right? So we can also go with the float star. Okay. So c alloc, and I am giving some five blocks, and the size is size of size of int okay so size of int here a fly five blocks will be created each of two bytes if it is a 16 bit compiler right so two bytes of memory the pointer again it will point here itself pointer again points here itself. and the starting of the address starting it so hope you understood. So if you increment the pointer automatically, next it will be moving to the two bytes with a difference of two bytes because it is an integer. Similarly, if you want to use a float, so we can write a ptr is equal to some float star. So type casting to the pointer, right? So tell some five comma size of float. So this you can use. So if you use this one, the same five blocks will be allocated and each of four bytes. Each of four bytes. But in ML of function, the complete if it is an int integer, okay. So or we can write here PTR is equal to int star ML of Five into size of float, right? So if this one, then the complete block of memory of twenty bytes will be allocated, and the pointer will be addressing at the starting address. The pointer will be addressing to the starting address of this memory. Okay, so here. It, it will create a blocks the number of blocks so only the difference is here we in, in mlr function will give only one parameter and in the clr function will give the two parameters right so these two are the used to allocate uh, the memory at runtime so mlr and clr so mainly these will be used in the data structures and uh, uh, like uh, the linked list and all these things. We will go with this uh, dynamic memory allocation. And there is a one more function we have seen that is a realloc function. So if the memory allocated with the help of these two, that means either uh, uh, mlloc or clloc is not sufficient, and if you want to add a more number of memory, 
Then we can go with this real That means a reallocation. Reallocation. That means we can increase the memory, existing memory, which is uh, created with the help of this uh, malloc and cloc function. See, this the syntax for this one is simple. Ptr is equal to realloc. We have to increase the pointer with the required size. That means a new size. Okay. So how much we need to increase? That should be written here. So this pointer will be increased. See, Ptr is equal to some. So I am allocating some memory. See. So this statement will allocate some 5 into to 10 bytes of memory. And if I want to increase the more number of, I mean, uh, if, if I want to increase the memory, so then I will go with the realloc ptr is equal to realloc some ptr comma 10. Or simply you can go with some 2 into size of int or simply we can go with the number so that it will be increased to 10 plus 2 into size so 2 to the 4 total 14 bytes of memory will be allocated here so one thing we have to remember the reallocation will be done if we need to increase the memory which is already allocated by using these two functions so if you are increasing i mean uh, if you are allocating the memory using the compile time and if you are using this real lock, it will not be successful, right? So if you are, if you want to increase the memory, which are allocated using one among these two, that means malloc or cloc, then this real lock function will be used, right? Then, so as I said that these are the, I mean, uh, this memory is allocated by the user the memory is allocated by the user at the runtime. So it is necessary to release the memory or deallocate the memory by the user itself. So for that purpose, we are having for deallocation, deallocating the memory, we are having a free function. So unless you use this free function, the memory allocated by using these uh, functions will not be released. So, the syntax for this one is a simple a free of pointer. Free of pointer. So, whatever the pointer we are using during the allocation, that pointer should be given as an argument for this free function. So, that whatever the memory we are using, uh, we are allocating using malloc or cloc or this realloc, that memory will be get released if you use this free function. And once again, I'm repeating. It is the responsibility of the user to release the memory after using the memory. So that that's why we'll use this free function. So this dynamic memory allocation will be having the four functions. One is malloc for allocating, cloc for allocating the memory in in terms of blocks, and the realloc in order to increase the memory, and a free function in order to release the memory or deallocate the memory, right? So these are the functions we are using in this dynamic memory allocation and this will be used in linked list or simply we can say in data structures we will use this dynamic memory allocations in order to save the memory. So there is no wastage of memory and there is no chance of getting out of bound exceptions, right? So hope you understood guys. So let us stop here and if you are having any doubts regarding this uh, dynamic memory allocation uh, so feel free to post your doubts in the comment section so that definitely I will try to clarify all your doubts and if you really understood my sessions like my session share my sessions with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so thanks for watching thank you very much